I'm going to talk about the major shifts in assessment and instruction as a result of the Common Core and provide a few examples and we'll end in time uh, to answer a few questions. Okay, good. So the key shifts uh, as described by the developers of the Common Core as well as the assessment consortia of both Smarter Balanced and PARC are these three. Um, the first is a focus on complexity and we were hearing a great deal about students uh, needing to engage with more complex text in a developmental continuum from K to 12 and also a lot about the academic language um, that is embedded in these texts and students exposure to that. Uh, the second key shift is a move to focus on evidence um, that is reading and both reading and writing grounded in evidence from text and both literary and informational text. And the third major shift focuses on knowledge building and um, the Common Core uh, is recognizes the importance of the knowledge base in being able to um, read complex text and understand it as well as um, be, being able to uh, identify the evidence uh, for the claims that you make based on your reading. Now the implications of these shifts are several. The first is that we need to have texts that are worth reading, um, worthy of study, that in fact are substantive and that students um, can actually uh, read deeply and gain uh, information from, build information from. And the second is that we have tasks that are worthy of engagement, um, substantive tasks that uh, enable students to practice um, this deep critical reading of these uh, substantive texts. And then the integration that this set of standards uh, represents is uh, of several different types. So the first level of integration is integration across the areas of the language arts. That is, we're not treating reading and writing and speaking and listening in language as separate entities. Um, rather, the Common Core treats them uh, in combination with each other. The second type of integration within the Common Core is the integration across standards. Uh, the Common Core um, do not focus on individual standards, um, rather they focus on standards in combination with each other, and I'll say more about this. And then a third type of integration is the integration between the areas of the language arts with the disciplines. So integration is a huge uh, part of the standards and the standards framework needs to be read as an integrated framework and not um, as a, a set of discrete uh, standards or separate areas of the language arts. Now the assessment consortia have identified key claims in reading and writing um, that are driving the development of the new assessments. And this is a really important uh, factor in the development of the assessments. You have to uh, understand that the claims are what are driving the assessment development and not the individual standards. And the claims are reflect this integration that I was just talking about. And you can see the claims for Smarter Balanced and for PARC are somewhat similar. Um, in the areas of reading and writing. So beginning with reading claims for Smarter Balanced, the claim is that students are expected to read closely and analytically to comprehend a range of increasingly complex literary and informational texts. And the PARC version of this is read and comprehend a range of sufficiently complex texts independently. Very similar. And then the writing claim um, for the two consortia are also um, highly related. So for Smarter Balanced, uh, students are expected to produce effective and well-grounded writing for a range of purposes and audiences. And Parks is that students are expected to write effectively when using and or analyzing sources. And then the third claim area for reading and writing deals with research. 
So Smarter Balance talks about uh, students being expected to engage in research and inquiry to investigate topics and to analyze, integrate, and present information, where PARC talks about students um, needing to build and present knowledge through research and the integration, comparison, and synthesis of ideas. So again, it's important to recognize that the claims are what are driving the development of the assessments, and the claims reflect these larger holistic uh, goals rather than uh, sub-standards and sub-skills. So um, this chart uh, depicts the various kinds of uh, tasks or items that are being uh, developed for the, uh, by the two assessment consortia. So um, within the multiple choice realm, uh, PARC has two types, evidence-based selected response, which are more like traditional multiple choice, although when I show you some examples, you'll see that there are some differences. And then they have technology enhanced constructed response, which are um, intended to use technology uh, to do things that would be difficult to do in a traditional multiple choice. And then Smarter Balanced has a selected response, which is again, more like a traditional multiple choice and also technology enhanced. So you can see there are similarities there. Um, and then with the open-ended items, uh, PARC uh, has prose constructed responses, and those only appear in their performance tasks. Um, and Smarter Balance has constructed responses, and those uh, are of different lengths, and some appear in uh, the summative uh, assessment, and some appear in the performance tasks. And then both us consortia have performance tasks. Um, PARC has three different types of performance tasks, the literary analysis, narrative, and research simulation task. And Smarter Balance has various combinations of stimuli, information processing demands, and products or performances that students are expected um, to produce in the context of these performance tests. And I'm going to show you some examples uh, from each of the consortia. So here is uh, an overall view of the Smarter Balance system. Both PARC and Smarter Balance are intended to be assessment systems that have multiple components. The component that I'm going to uh, focus my examples on and comments on is the summative component. Um, that's the one that they're uh, working on most diligently and that we expect to be in place in 2014-15. And you see in Smarter Balance, there's two um, parts to the summative component. Um, there's the performance tasks and there's the computer adaptive assessment. And um, there's one performance task in English language arts and one in mathematics and they consist of uh, research uh, questions. This, this is the stimuli, the information processing demands, and the products, and I'll show you some examples of this. And the computer adaptive assessment is more short answer with selected response, uh, technology enhanced, and constructed response. And here's a similar diagram for PARC. And again, we're gonna focus on, oops, I don't know how that happened. Okay, we're going to focus on the summative assessment, um, which has both a performance-based component and an end-of-year assessment. And in the performance-based uh, component, as I illustrated before, there are three different uh, tasks. Um, and in the end-of-year assessment, there are all uh, short answer questions. Put this together so that you could get a sense of just uh, how much time uh, for the English language arts assessments in these two different uh, uh, assessment consortia are proposing. So you see in grade three for PARC, the end of the year assessment, um, that's two 60 minute sessions and the performance uh, tasks are expected to take between 40 and 60 minutes per task. We recall that there's three performance tasks. So um, in grade three, it's approximately 
uh, four and a half hours of uh, assessment over at least three sessions and potentially more than three sessions. Um, uh, that compares to Smarter Balanced, which has an hour and 45 minutes in the computer adaptive test. That's the more short answer. Um, uh, the performance task is intended to take, uh, I think it's 120 minutes, 35 minutes of which is the stimulus and research questions, and 70 minutes of which is the writing prompt for a total of three and a half hours. So you can see, you know, going in the grades that for PARC it increases from four and a half hours to almost six hours, and it's uh, more constant and smarter balance goes from three and a half hours to four hours as you get up to high school. The length of the texts that are going to be on the assessment um, also vary. Uh, for PARC in third grade, it'll be between 200 and 800 words per passage, the shorter passages being um, more on the end of year assessment. And for Smarter Balanced, um, it's 650 words approximately at grade three. And then when you go up to high school, you see that um, it goes up to 1,500 words uh, and 1,100 words, uh, depending on the uh, assessment. So I want to stop and talk about just what the implications for instruction are based on this uh, information that we have so far about these uh, assessments. So um, it's pretty clear that to be well prepared to uh, succeed in these assessments, students are going to need experience reading long grade level or near grade level texts independently and silently. Then they're going to need strategies for dealing with grade level texts, particularly if they can't read them independently. So that's going to call for some instruction to help them develop these strategies to read these long grade level texts on their own in the assessment. So all of this means they're going to have to have stamina. Um, they're going to have to develop some motivation, you know, to persist in these tasks and um, some engagement in the, the whole reading enterprise um, if they're going to be successful. Um, it also means that everybody is going to need to be exposed to these uh, rich, complex grade level texts, um, whether they can read them independently or not, because that we have to build the knowledge, expose them to the vocabulary and sentence structure and, you know, the density of these texts if they're going to be able to handle them on the assessments. And, and that also suggests that those who can't handle these grade level texts independently are going to also need some exposure um, to instructional level texts if they're going to improve their basic skills. There's a fair amount of research you know, to support that. I don't think anybody knows what yet what the proper balance is likely to be um, between these different types of texts, but um, it's pretty clear that for many students they're going to have to be uh, engaged with text at different levels. So I'd like to move on and show you some sample short answer items. Uh, recall that Smarter Balanced has three types of short answer uh, items, uh, selected response, technology enhanced, and constructed response. And the constructed response short answer items in Smarter Balanced are used for the reading targets, not for the writing targets. Uh, PARC has two types of short answer items, evidence-based and uh, selected response and technology-enhanced constructed response. So here's an example of a sample item from PARC that's evidence-based selected response. So it has a Part A and a Part B, and Part A asks about a main idea, and then Part B asks about what sentence from the text best supports their answer to part A. And in some of these uh, questions on um, PARC, you have to get both part A and part B right in order to get credit for the question. There are some others that have uh, multiple parts where you can get partial credit. Um, it just depends on the question. 
This is an example of a park technology enhanced constructed response where the student is expected to drag um, the boxes on the left hand side into the appropriate spot um, to reflect uh, what the text has, uh, the information the text has provided about the life cycle of the butterfly. This is an example of a technology enhanced item, uh, vocabulary item from Smarter Balance. And the students are expected to read the sentences, then answer the question, which is click on two phrases from the paragraph that help you understand the meaning of SCARD. So it's a vocabulary item, um, but it's asking um, what the context clues are for understanding what that uh, vocabulary item means in this text. And here's a couple of examples of Smarter Balanced brief constructed response. Again, you may recall that they are going to score these primarily for reading. So um, write a paragraph explaining why people who live in moist climates work harder to prevent mold than people that live in dry climates. Include details from the passage about how they prevent mold. So that's one example. Another, based on what you read in the text, do you think cell phones should be allowed in schools? Using the lists provided in the text, write a paragraph arguing why your position is more reasonable than the opposing position. So um, these can appear as part of the uh, computer adaptive test, which is all short answer, or as part of the research questions in the performance assessment. I'll say more about that in a minute. So just looking at these short answer questions, what are the implications for instruction? Um, it's pretty clear that students are going to need more than basic understanding of the text. They're going to need a deeper level of understanding of the text. They're going to need practice with justifying their understandings from the text. Um, they're going to need opportunities to apply their understanding in different ways. So they're going to be asked to use the knowledge they've gained and the uh, understandings they've developed in a variety of ways. And they're going to need uh, experience with academic vocabulary in context. Um, and then I would add that I feel an overarching uh, emphasis needs to be made for students in preparation for these assessments on self-monitoring and fix-up. This is really about students being able to direct and guide and monitor their own comprehension and who have some strategies for um, I, recognizing when uh, things don't make sense and addressing uh, you know, the fix-up that's needed in order to uh, make good meaning from the text they're reading. Okay, on to the performance tasks. Um, the Smarter Balance performance tasks have multiple components. Uh, right now they start with a classroom activity that's not scored and um, devote 20 minutes to that classroom activity. Uh, it's possible they will drop this classroom activity. I uh, understand that right now they're actually doing some studies to see how students perform uh, those who have the classroom activity and those who don't. And they'll make a final determination on whether they're going to keep the classroom activity based on this research. So following the classroom activity, the students enter what they call the research phase, 35 minutes of which um, they focus on the stimuli and the research questions. Um, and at grade three, there might be one or two different stimuli. And in high school, there could be as many as five different stimuli that they have to work across. And they, uh, each research section will include at least three uh, research questions, which, which can be of any type, selected response, technology enhanced, or constructive response. And then there's a 70 to 85 minute writing phase. Um, and there's three different kinds of writing prompts that they um, might receive. They won't, unlike Park, they're not going to receive all three. Um, they're just going to receive one. So uh, it might be opinion or argumentative, it might be narrative, or it might be informational or explanatory. 
So, <coughs> excuse me, the structure of the Smarter Balance performance task, as I said before, is you have a stimulus or a stimuli, several stimuli, you have some type of information processing demand, um, and then you have a product or performance. So you can see here there are a variety of different forms that the stimuli may take, readings, video clips, audio clips, graphs, charts, etc. Um, the information processing is largely going to be done in the context of the research phase. It could be note-taking, comprehension questions, um, and then the, there's a range of products or performances that students, but mostly that's the writing prompt that could be one of those three types. So here's an example from grade four, um, which is available on the Smarter Balanced website. It's on animal defenses, uh, 125 minutes in total. The classroom activity is, again, 20 minutes, and it's intended to prepare the students for the research phase and the writing phase. Part one is the research phase, where they examine the sources or stimuli. They take notes. They respond to three constructed response uh, research questions, and that takes 35 minutes. And then part two is the writing phase. And in this case, it's an explanatory essay and they have 70 minutes in which to complete the explanatory essay. So the classroom activity is outlined, uh, and the first step is to orient the students to the topic and tell them what they're going to be asked to do um, with this topic. Uh, the second step is uh, to assist the students in accessing the stimuli. So um, they're going to show a video and lead the whole class in discussing um, the video. And the questions for discussion are provided in the, in the script or in the directions. And step three is to take a few minutes to clarify what the expectations for the writing task are, to explain to the students what they're expected to do in writing an explanatory essay and the directions provide that explanation. So this is the, what constitutes the 20 minute classroom activity that's not scored. Then they move into part one, or, which is the stimuli and research questions. And the students have 35 minutes to read an article and watch uh, another video. Um, they take notes. Um, the note-taking grid is provided that the students can use, and then they answer three constructive response questions about the sources. So what does the article Animal Roll-Ups tell you about why some animals curl up? Use details from the article to support your answer. Um, so all of this is preparatory to the writing task, but these three questions will be scored. And then you move to the writing assignment. Um, and this is the writing assignment. Your class is preparing a museum display that will include photos of a variety of animals and interesting facts about them. You've been asked to write an article for the museum display explaining about animal defenses. Choose one animal from the article animal roll-ups and one animal from the video. In your article, explain how each of these animals protects itself from its enemies and how the two animals' defenses are similar or different include details from your sources. And they have 70 minutes to review their notes and review the stimuli and plan, draft, and revise their explanatory essays. So um, the PARP performance tasks, as I said earlier, there's three different types of performance tasks, a literary analysis task, a research simulation task, and a narrative task. Um, and students are expected to complete uh, each of these tasks as part of their performance assessment. At least right now, that's the plan. Um, so in the literary analysis task, they answer some short answer questions about two literary texts, and then they're asked to write a literary analysis uh, comparing the two texts. In the research simulation task, they read an anchor text and answer short answer questions. Then they read two additional sources and answer some more questions. And then they synthesize their understandings into a single analytic essay. And in the narrative task, they read one or two brief texts, answer some short answer questions, and write either a narrative story or a narrative description. 
So you can see there's some similarity in the design of the performance tasks across the two assessments where they start out with um, comprehension questions about uh, either an anchor text or an initial text and then uh, students are expected to build their knowledge across additional sources and then apply that knowledge to some kind of a writing task. Um, this is the writing to sources, be it literary or research or narrative. So here's uh, some uh, an example from Park grade 10. Um, the texts uh, for this literary analysis are Ovid's uh, Daedalus and Icarus and Sexton's To a Friend Whose Work Has Come to Triumph. Um, here's uh, one of the uh, short answer items uh, that would come first in response to one of the texts. Again, it's a, a part A and a part B. I think this is one of those where um, you can get partial credit. This is a vocabulary item, um, another short answer associated with uh, this literary analysis performance task. Um, part A, what does the word uh, vanity mean in these lines from the text? I'm going to give you the lines. And then part B, which word from the lines from the text uh, in part A best helps the reader understand the meaning of vanity? So another one of these two-parters that you probably have to get both parts right in order to get credit. And then um, the prose constructed response, which is the extend, which is comparable to the writing prompt in the Smarter Balance uh, performance assessment, is this: uh, use what you have learned from uh, reading these texts to write an essay that provides an analysis of how Sexton transforms Daedalus and Icarus. As a starting point, you may want to consider what is emphasized, absent, or different in the two texts, a little scaffolding here, but feel free to develop your own focus for analysis. And then develop your essay by providing textual evidence from both texts. Be sure to follow the conventions of standard English. And an interesting thing Park has just put out, if you go to their website, it came out in, in April, is their performance level, a draft of their performance level descriptors. And at each grade level, they have one through five. But the way you are, are given a score of one through five is based on several different dimensions. One is the complexity of the text within. Is, so they're acknowledging that even if a grade, uh, text is in a particular grade band, there's still some differences in complexity. The accuracy of the student's response is the second dimension. And the third dimension is the quality of the evidence that the student presents. These are very interesting uh, directions that Park is taking with this that you might want to check out. So here's one at grade seven. This is a, an example of the research simulation task. These are the texts, three texts about Amelia Earhart. Um, here's a short answer comprehension item, a technology enhanced one, um, where below are three claims that one could make based on the article. Earhart's final resting place believed found. So there's the three claims. Highlight the claim that is supported by the most relevant and sufficient facts within Earhart's final resting place believed found. So um, you're clicking on the claims or dragging the claims um, to fit with the uh, parts of the question. In this, uh, the research simulation task, there are two pros constructed response items. The first one is based on the information in the text, biography of Amelia Earhart, write an essay that summarizes and explains the challenges Earhart faced throughout her life. Remember to use textual evidence. So this is a question that's based just on one of the texts to try to um, enhance comprehension of the single text before you work across the text. And then um, this is the final prose constructed response item where you've read three texts. All three include the claim that Earhart was a brave, courageous person. Um, consider the argument each author uses to demonstrate Earhart's bravery. And then write an essay that analyzes the strength of the arguments about Earhart's bravery in at least two of the texts. Remember to use textual evidence. So you see it's writing to sources. It's doing research from, from the text. 
And then uh, here's uh, the final uh, prose constructed response from a grade six uh, narrative task. So um, following the short answer questions about Julie of the Wolves, it says, in the passage, the author developed a strong character named Myax. Think about Myax and the details the author used to create that character. The passage ends with my ex waiting for the black wolf to look at her. Write an original story to continue where the passage ended. In your story, be sure to use what you have learned about the character in my ex as you tell what happens to her. So this is an example of a writing prompt for a narrative performance task. So what are the implications for instruction you know from what we've seen in the performance tasks um, you know clearly students need experience with a variety of types of source materials um, they need experience integrating ideas and information from multiple sources of information of different types and they need experience with different types of writing purposes opinion, argumentative, literary analysis, summaries, and so forth. So they need a broad range of uh, experience across texts and for different writing purposes. I think you can see um, from these examples uh, how they reflect the integration I talked about at the beginning of the webinar. Um, you know, these are not uh, tasks or items that have a narrow focus on a particular a grade level standard or a particular objective. These are integrated tasks um, asking students to uh, do a lot of integration and that's the kind of instruction um, that's going to best prepare them for these assessments. And it does indeed call for instruction and guidance and scaffolding and providing students with strategies and um, they aren't going to learn uh, to do well on these sorts of tasks if we uh, just give them directions. I want all of you to join us for our next two webinars for this academic year and then in the fall we're going to start up um, the series again and we have um, these two speakers and we intend to have others. Uh, we want to also have you go to um, YouTube and watch these two presentations, uh, the one by David and the one by Tim Shanahan. If you haven't watched these, I think that they, they're really um, excellent. Today's presentation slides are already available, so if you go into the Text Project homepage on webinars, you'll find Karen's webinar there. And we should have this presentation up at our YouTube site before May 1st. And remember, we have lots of free resources for you at Text Project, everything we offer is um, for you to download for free, including uh, professional development materials, student material, and teacher material.